On a rural farm in Meadowdale Valley, there is a barn filled with many, many Dalmatians living with several lost, lonely children. However, life on the Radcliffe Deerly Farm wasn't always what it is now. Once upon a time, the children had a pair of loving parents, until the night that Roger and Anita disappeared, leaving behind seven children, a half dozen dogs, and a half-built animal rescue center. Years have passed since then, and despite the best efforts of the older children, life on the farm has begun to fragment into pieces. Lyra, one of the middle children of the family, was kidnapped away by her biological mother, an alien named Suas, who found the lack of parents to be an inadequate atmosphere for her half-alien, half-sim daughter to be raised. Losing both their parents, one of their siblings, and trying to maintain a busy, demanding life on the farm has proven to be a strain some of the Radcliffe Dearly children simply couldn't bear any longer. Meredith, the eldest girl of the family, finally had enough, and one night, she too disappeared, rumored to have run away to the big city, where there would be ample opportunities for her to pursue her love of theater and distance herself from the painful, frustrating memories of her family tree. However, she didn't leave her entire family behind. Instead, Meredith kidnapped away the youngest of their siblings, Tobias, the only one of her family she felt close to anymore, and disappeared with the toddler and one of the family dogs to the depths of the big city. Now, the fate of the family rests firmly on the shoulders of the eldest child, Terry Radcliffe Dearly. With half his family missing or kidnapped, a barn full of Dalmatians to care for, a pet rescue center to build, and the increasing debts of the farm to pay off, how will Terry manage all of it, let alone ensure his high school homework is done on time? And so here we are, with the family farm placing a huge burden onto its unlucky Generation 2 heir, that we welcome Season 2 of the 101 Dalmatians Challenge. Hello everyone, and welcome to Season 2 of the 101 Dalmatians Challenge! Here in Sims 3 with all expansion packs and quite a bit of custom content. And it seems like Rai, our horse, is uh, rolling in the rain. Oh my goodness, it's Emma's birthday already today. I cannot believe she is already about to age up. And uh, we've got Dove, our stray dog, which we have taken into our pet rescue here, rolling around in the background covered in fleas and smelling kind of bad and already clearly we're jumping into quite a bit to do with the family so welcome back you guys it has been a long 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 time unfortunately since we have been in our 101 dalmatians challenge i did not mean for the series to take that long of a break uh whatsoever but i am so excited to be back especially with the very dramatic new developments so as you guys saw things got pretty tense and pretty interesting. Meredith ended up getting in a fight with her older brother Terry and she disappeared in the middle of the night taking baby Tobias, the youngest sibling of the Radcliffe Dearly family, and for some reason Vinegar the Chihuahua with her. So we are actually down three members of the household on top of Lyra, our half alien daughter, having been taken away by her alien mother to another planet and to her own 101 Dalmatians side series. And we are also still missing Roger and Anita, the founders of our 101 Dalmatians legacy. So for those of you who are just tuning in, you may wonder what the heck is going on. I will give you a brief little overview. But the basic gist of it is that we are living on a family farm working on the 101 Dalmatians challenge. This is the adorable little family farm. You can see it has experienced expanded so much since we first moved in. We've had expansions to the main house. We've had expansions to the barn where a lot of our Dalmatians live. We've had additional dog houses put in, trampolines and tree houses, the cows. We, we have cows now. Uh, we've got a beautiful garden in the back filled with a gigantic space rocks. And we also happen to have a little digging spot, a mysterious little cave system that is belonging to the Radcliffe 
dearly family that churns up some uh, crystals of deep, deep value quite often. In fact, selling the crystals is actually how the 101 Dalmatians uh, family, the Radcliffe Dearly family, has managed to make enough money that they could build such a huge household for their huge family. But I am get definitely getting ahead of myself. Basically, it's really quite the ride to go back to our first season of 101 Dalmatians and watch as Roger and Anita actually met uh, and they fell in love and their dogs Pongo and Perdita met and also fell in love and they began their huge big family their beautiful big family but something happened and Roger and Anita one day had an opportunity to go on their they're like a private three-day cruise and leave the household in charge with the teenagers so I took up that offer and then the game glitched them into nothingness so they just disappeared so Roger and Anita were no longer part of our household and the children were suddenly orphaned and we will be searching for Roger and Anita in the future. Don't worry, guys. I, I don't think they're gone forever if we can find them. But uh, they're definitely gone for now. And so Terry, is, as their eldest child, their, their, like, second, their first son, they ended up with like four girls, two boys. But Terry, as the eldest child, has been secretly taking care of the family farm, raising the Dalmatians, and trying to take care of his family for a very long time now. He even managed to get the, his parents' dream of starting an animal rescue up and going. So this entire lot over here is the Radcliffe Dearly Animal rescue, which they have gotten started with the horse, Rye, who was a abandoned horse that they took in and they're currently trying to train and rehabilitate so they can give him a new home. And the stray dog, Dove, over here, who is also an abandoned stray who needs a lot of TLC in order to be healthy, happy, and eventually change her traits. But we'll talk about how we adjust the dogs that we take in for the dogs, cats, and uh, horses that we take in as stray over at the the animal rescue in just a second back on the main family farm we are under all of this chaos still working on the 101 dalmatians challenge that is the heart of this series and we have been working with our dalmatians for a long time we have very special rules in place so that we cannot breed our dalmatians if they are not healthy happy and well cared for and we also have a special rule in place where we don't overbreed our females so we roll a dice to determine how many litters our female dogs can have and once they hit that number of litters in their lifetime, they are done having puppies. And then we need to take care of them uh, until our breeder pairs we can never give away. They kind of clutter up the household in a loving way because we keep them until they pass away of old age. Because they're part of the family and they are building these big, beautiful puppy family trees. So Rod or Roger and Anita's dogs, Pongo and Perdita, actually had a lot of puppies. And for the 101 Dalmatians Challenge, we have already achieved one, two, three, four. In fact, let's go through the names. We already have Lucky. We've got Penny, Rolly, Pepper. We've got Fidget, Cody, Patch, Thunder, Spotty, Daisy, Turtle, Skittles, Diamond. We've got Amelia, Percy, Basil, Ranger, Cloudy. Many of these are named by you guys. Dusky, Kada, and Allison. And they have already moved on. We figured out which one of the dogs we wanted to be the heir. You guys actually voted on the Dalmatian we then bought to be the heir to the second generation, or the, the mate for the heir to the second generation of our 101 Dalmatians challenge. And that is Anissa, our beautiful space dog, our alien space dog who is currently curled up with one of her puppies from her very first litter. This is the original Nissa. If you guys actually watch our 101 Dalmatians side story, Galactic Spots with Lyra, when we have her running around in space with her alien mother... Then you'll see there's Anissa in that series too. And that one is actually a clone of this dog that Lyra's alien grandmother created a clone of their family dog so that Lyra wouldn't feel so lonely being away from Earth and taken away from her siblings and her home. So let's just say, let's let's review just for a second. Let's back up and review really quickly, guys. We have just covered basically having our sim family move to a big giant farm. 
trying to breed over a hundred Dalmatians in healthy, happy ways, running an animal rescue, working with aliens, having a private family cave that we are mining precious gemstones out of, uh, having genetically modified dogs that you guys actually voted for, naming our puppies after name suggestions that you guys give us, <laughs> and having side stories. There's a lot to cover, and I understand if it seems really confusing. I am actually working very hard in the background at creating a website with a Wikipedia, a Siripedia, as you might want to call it, so that you can understand what's going on and who the various characters are. But if you're really confused, please just leave questions in the comments or check out the first series. It's truly one of my absolute favorites, and I've loved watching the family evolve to this point. So where are we now? Well, we are on generation two of our 101 Dalmatians challenge, and we are currently on puppy 23, if I remember correctly, and if I counted correctly. We have two little babies. We have Castor right over here, and we have Pollux right over here, and they are actually identical twin puppies, which has I, I did not think that would happen since we have so many spots. So I was actually, to be honest, a little disappointed they didn't look more like their mother. But they do have some green spots and who knows, maybe as they age up, these puppies will actually have more unique markings. But they are Nissa's child. And then Basil, who is a liver spotted Dalmatian, is actually the heir to generation two of our Dalmatian challenge. And so Basil over here is playing in the yard of the animal rescue where Terry takes the animals to kind of run with them, play with them, work them so that you can go and find gemstones and exercise the animals and try to improve their happiness and improve their traits. So Terry's dream is to be a animal rescuer and he is in love with and best friends with Tisha. Tisha moved into the family back when we still had Roger and Anita to be the family nanny. She was going to help out. She has her own little nanny nook and she she took over the position of being nanny. But as you can see, Tisha's really, really, really heartbroken. She's really upset because she's no longer a nanny. <laughs> There's no longer really any kids to watch over. Today is going to be Emma's birthday. Emma will be a teenager and Emma is now the youngest in the family. She's not normally the youngest. That would have been Tobias. But T Tobias was kidnapped by their older sister, Meredith, who has fled the family in fury. She is out of here. She doesn't want to live this farm life anymore. The only family member that Meredith actually cared about, she, f she feels like their parents abandoned them when they disappeared. And the only family member that Meredith ever cared about is little Tobias, the toddler. So she kidnapped Tobias and took him away from the family. And here is poor Tisha, who basically raised Tobias from day one absolutely devastated beyond words to have the little one disappear. Actually, Tobias's birthday, uh, basically Roger and Anita came home with their seventh child having been born, put the baby down on the floor and disappeared for their vacation. So they literally, from the moment Tobias was born, Tisha has been taking care of him as his nanny and, and really honestly like his, his mom, kind of like his adoptive mom. And here she is, even though she's still a young teenager and she comes from a very dysfunctional family, if you guys remember, like, oh my gosh. We have NRAS installed, so we get towny stories popping up for the stories that happen around town outside of my control with the townies and other characters. And Tisha's family, like, bite like cats and dogs, and her mom has remarried and had just baby after baby and doesn't seem to be taking care of them, and they're always calling and yelling at Tisha. It's an absolute mess. So for Tisha, this is her family. And Tobias was kind of, in a way, sort of, kind of her son. And so Meredith has taken Tobias away. And Tisha just doesn't know how to cope. And she thinks it's her fault somehow. Because she does have the unlucky trait. And she just has this, especially because she was raised by a bad family, just has this instinctive feeling that everything that goes wrong is somehow her fault. And she really misses Anita because she saw Anita as a healthy mother figure who actually cared about her. And now 
now Anita's gone. So it's been very rough for poor, poor Tisha here. I feel so sad for her. She's feeling unlucky. Uh, she's woken up and they're trying to cope with the fact that like the baby of the family is gone. Lyra was taken away by her alien mother when uh, Sue asked, Lyra's alien mother found out that Lyra was here unattended, that the two human parents she left to take care of this child just disappeared. No one told her. Sue asked, lost her temper and took Lyra back home into space uh, to raise herself instead of leaving her here on Earth to be raised by a bunch of kids. So they've lost two kids that way and now even though Tisha knows she's supposed to be happy and she's supposed to try to make the most of it for Emma because it's Emma's birthday, that means the last child is growing up and Tisha's just really struggling. So we're going to talk more about Tisha's struggles and some plans I have in mind for her because she's going to become an adult pretty soon and some big changes I think that might happen to her lifetime wish. Originally her lifetime wish was to be a zoologist and that she and Terry being zoologist and working on the animal oops and working on the animal rescue center together was supposed to be what they did together and they're slowly but surely falling in love. Tisha is very 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 hands-off though. She's really nervous. She just really feels like everything that goes wrong is her fault but I'm hoping she can learn to rely on Terry and I hope Terry can learn to be reliable. That's actually what he's kind of going for. He's a little bit of a daredevil so he really needs to be careful. But he's trying to make the most of it. He's got a lot on his young shoulders right now. He's got a lot he's got to figure out how to cope with. His parents are gone and he's just kind of accepted that some disaster has happened and his family's orphaned. His family is just splitting apart at the, at the seams and they're having a hard time. Like he lost half his, his family. Seriously, like half his family is pretty much gone. He has lost Tobias. He's, in fact, more than half his family, his parents are gone. Tobias has been kidnapped by Meredith. And then Lyra was taken away by Suas. And he's just left with two of his sisters. How weird would that be to have had one, two, three other siblings? Just poof, poof. The majority of your siblings are gone. And so to, he's having a hard time. Tobias is having a hard time of it. He's trying to figure out how to become stronger. That's really kind of his focus right now. Increasing those athletic skills, training the dogs up even more, and doing what he can to try to make the pet rescue center, the animal rescue center, really become uh, well known. He's not 100% dedicated to it the way that Tisha, before all of this happened, opened her heart to the plight of those poor animals. And she really wanted to see the Animal Rescue Center flourish. She really wanted to see this place. They just got the, the building done before Roger and Anita vanished. They had just signed off a ton of money and they had just signed off for the builders so that this place could even be built. So the building is done, but it is almost completely empty beyond having some little spots decorated so that we can feed some of the dogs that we bring in. Uh, and you can see there's like a little, little dog pins in the back and there's a little spot to be able to bathe the dogs. It still needs to be like hooked up with plumbing. It still needs to be filled with furnishings. But, you know, Tisha and Terry thought, hey, that would be really cool. We can use our skills to help out animals. But they've kind of been sidetracked. Tisha is sort of depressed right now and distracted. So it's kind of like this place is gathering dust and cobwebs. And Terry is beginning to feel more and more like he has something to prove. So he wants to really focus on his athletic skill, really become stronger, and be able to financially see the family on better footholds. And for that, he needs to be able to train the Dalmatians up and sell the Dalmatian puppies once they are of age and become adults to the aliens. <laughs> yes, for those of you who are new to this, that may be so confusing, but we do sell our dogs to aliens. And that's been a family tradition that actually is how we met Sue Ass. She showed up and she was a dog lover and really thought that the Dalmatians were cool and she could give them elite, super fancy homes living off planet, living in space where they would be revered as some of the rarest, most beautiful pets that someone could possibly hope for. And Sue Ass, as a trader, made a ton of money and she split that money with the Radcliffe Dearly family. And and that's how we justified selling Tiberium. <laughs> Tiberium is one of the gemstones you can find in Sims 3. And we can find it so 
easily because we have dogs. For those of you guys who don't know, okay, we don't have any in there. I think we've got Tiberium shards somewhere. I'll have to find, like here's a piece of Tiberium. Okay, so right now the Tiberium is worth $89, not a lot. But if you cut Tiberium and you put it in the yard, it grows into a special bush and then it sells for like 30,000 Simlonians. That's kind of game breaky the way that you can get that much money. So we've always made it so we pretend that we sell the Dalmatians. When we put the Dalmatian puppies up for adoption, we say we sell them to fantastic homes. Like basically they become canine royalty living in space with aliens. And that's where the Tiberium money comes from. So to give myself a challenge to be able to accept the Tiberium money once we get like that 30,000 simoleons that just plunks into our lap with a full grown Tiberium, I say that we have to have a trade agreement with aliens. To have a trade agreement with an alien, we have to be friends with an alien. And right now, we are no longer friends with Suas because she stole our sister. So Terry, or Tobias, excuse me, or Terry, oh my gosh, Tobias is the one who got kidnapped. That's right. Sorry, Terry. <laughs> But so Terry has to sign a new trade agreement by becoming friends with Zolanda before he can sell the Tiberium. However, we can sell all of these other gemstones to kind of make ends meet. And he's starting to learn how to cut gemstones so he can try to make sure that he can get enough money that, to feed everybody and to try to take care of the family. And so Terry is really kind of focusing more on the finances of things, realizing that he has to do trade agreements and he just has this mental idea that he wants to become physically stronger so that he feels like he can handle all of this, but also so he can jump down this hole that we have on the farm. You need to have really high logic and athletic skill to jump down this hole and be able to investigate it. And so that's one of the other reasons we're trying to get his athletic skill up. And then I also feel like Terry, knowing that he's coming up on adulthood pretty soon, he's not interested in college or higher education or anything like that. He is interested in building up this building. So this building that is on the uh, estate grounds for the animal rescue is actually going to be our hall of fame for the uh, Dalmatian Kennel Club, basically. And I really feel like Terry wants his family name to mean something. He doesn't want to see the Radcliffe Dearly family just disintegrate into nothingness because there, there's nobody left. And he doesn't want to see the efforts of his parents lost. He doesn't want to see all of the hard work that they have done to collect so many rare things. The dogs are really talented. They are some of the best scouting dogs out there in his opinion. We've got all of these fossils. We have all of these like really cool, really cool uh, stone hydrants that we've found. We've got all these diamond dogs. Uh, hang on. We've got some diamond dogs that the dogs have found. And so Terry wants a place to be able to show that off, show off how good his dogs are at finding things, uh, which is like one of the high marks of Dalmatian pedigree in The Sims, of course. And we want to get like some portraits of the dogs up in here and just some evidence of like the wealth that they have accumulated over time and like the rewards for being so high bred. And in the future, we might even come up with a fun way where we could try to make some sort of pet show and then see if we could win some medals for different dogs. I think that'd be really fun, but it is something much further down the road because there's clearly so much to catch up on. But where Terry and Tisha once upon a time were more focused on the rescue side of things, now Terry is really more focused on uh, building up some sort of family legacy here before his family crumbles into nothingness. He wants to see something set in stone in this building that will mark down always that the Radcliffe Dearly family was amazing, they were good, and they took good care of their Dalmatians and loved them dearly. So that's what Terry's focus really is. Now, I did not mean to talk for 20 minutes just about what we're doing and catch you guys up on all the details, but we might as well rip the band-aid off and just catch up on this. And I'm sorry, Tisha. She just looks so sad, you guys. But with Tisha over here, she does still want to take care of things. She's a very, very nurturing person. And I would actually want to change her neurotic trait to nurturing. Uh, I do want to go through her lifetime rewards. And I would love to change her trait to nurturing instead. So that's lifetime wish. I could see her lifetime wish possibly changing. Uh, oh, and you can't change traits. I'm, I'm pretty... Well, actually, I think you can change traits, but it's like really hard let me see if I can find it. There's the motive mobile, my best friend, 
Um, I'm pretty sure there's something where you can like change a trait. Midlife crisis. Pick new traits to become the sim, uh, sim genetics failed to create. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think midlife crisis could allow her to change her trait. So I'm hoping we can take away her neurotic trait, which I feel like is left over from her bad upbringing with that really rough family. If you have not seen what her parents get up to behind the scenes with Enras, just the, the game generating its own stories, definitely check it out. Her, she's just got the wildest family. I've always felt so bad for poor Tisha. But anyway, I, I want to see if we can make her happy. I want to see if we can bring her up to that 20,000 needed so that we can change that trait to nurturing. And I want Tisha to be able to become a vet. So there is a custom veterinarian career in The Sims 3 that you can download from Mod The Sims 3. And I want to put that into the game. But then I realized... Right now, as it stands, Tisha is flunking. Like, a hunt. where is it? There she is. She is, like, flunking out of school. It's really bad. She needs to pull her grades up, and she's almost an adult. So I feel like if she doesn't at least get a B, then she can't get the vet career. And we'll just have to, like, permanently keep her away from the vet career, and she'll have to go through other means to try to make money and to try to build up the vet place. But if she can get the vet career, then I feel like maybe we could even say um, that we could hire helpers that I could just like temporarily move people in during the day who could work as veterinary assistants at the animal rescue and they could help us to train the animals faster so I think that would be really fun and that's if Tisha can become a veterinarian but I'm gonna give Tisha the challenge of having to get her grades to at least a B plus before she gets to adulthood if she wants to become a vet and that's because vet school is actually harder to get into than some med schools. So we're going to give Tisha that challenge and that's just going to be her first thing. So let me go ahead and actually, can I put that, where can I add that into her little personality tracker? I know somewhere, somewhere in here, Tisha. I know we have your little tracker. I know it's somewhere in here. It's not your adventure log. It's not your scrapbook. Oh dear. I know there's like that little bio that you can fill out for different Sims and it would be fantastic if I could find hers. I don't want you to go to school. She's homeschooled. Hey, my goodness. I have to get used to Sims 3 all over again. And the other thing is though, guys, I also want Tisha to possibly make a cameo in The Sims 4 when the Cats and Dogs uh, expansion comes out. And so you might see her make a cameo as a veterinary assistant in The Sims 4 when we do our veterinarian Let's Play. That's going to be really, really, really fun to just see that, like, that crossover. And we might have a reverse crossover with the very special Sim I have in mind to become a vet in The Sims 4 coming here and we're working as a vet assistant. So I think that'd be a lot of fun. Anyway, Tisha, I have no idea where I'm supposed to find your little, your little edit badoo dad. Oh, and here's her family tree. Like, look at all these babies. This is just, this is just nutter butters. Uh, uh, Alicia, you just need to make up your mind. I can't remember how to edit her little. I'm sure I'm going to stumble on it later and be like, oh, of course this is where it is. But I don't think it's in her scrapbook. Pretty, oh yeah, it is in her scrapbook. Oh my goodness, all right. So Tisha's current challenge, and I think that'll help me kind of keep track of what we're doing for everyone, is to raise her grades to at least, uh, at least B plus before adulthood in order to get into vet school. And it would be kind of cool to send her to university, but I don't think we will. We'll just say that she can go to community college in town. That'd be more her speed too. She doesn't really want to leave the family farm. This is truly where she feels like it's her home now after all. But all right, so that handles Tisha and Terry. Hopefully they'll grow closer and not further apart now that they're trying to cope with this. And Tisha will be able to find a way to have an outlet for her nurturing. I mean, we used to have a family so big every single one of these chairs was filled every day for dinner and now it won't be and that's just really devastating so hopefully Tisha can cope with that cuddle her cat uh, she does have a cat now his name is Pepper after uh, one of my cats I used to have a long time ago and I really miss him and loved him a lot but she got a cat that they rescued named Pepper and you guys were so excited when we got a cat in this family and the other two remaining members of the Radcliffe Dearly family are Andrea and Andrea is a young teenager she just barely has become a teenager and and she's really, really, really 
silently suffered at the loss of one family member after another. And she's really kind of become very, very introverted. She's pulled in. She doesn't really want to have anything to do with anyone anymore. And that's very sad because she used to be super positive, super engaged and very quiet, but polite and very, um, observant. Her trait used to be observant. And so she would watch everybody. She'd get to know everybody. She was very observant of everybody. But I, I thought just to go with the theme of having changed because of all of the loss, I changed her observant trait to the loner trait. And so Andrea has really just kind of pulled away from everyone and everything. And the only thing she wants out of life right now is to just focus on her painting. Focus on her painting and maybe her writing. And I have a feeling that poetry would probably be what she would focus on. So she's really starting to pull away from the pink and happy phase of her life. We might start seeing her uh, kind of change where she just becomes more withdrawn and introverted. But we'll have to see where her path goes. And then we've got Emma. And Emma is a thinker. Emma tries to channel her energy in very disciplined ways and Emma is not going to have let that alien Suas take her beloved sister Lyra away forever. Emma is going to become a teenager today. She is going to be aging up and she is going to be starting developing a whole new series of skills. Once upon a time, Emma wanted to be a world-renowned surgeon. But I have a feeling, guys, that things are going to change. She's going to do a little bit of thinking. Uh, she's very, very logically minded. She's been building up her logic. Emma actually spends most of her nights searching the stars, trying to figure out where Lyra is. And in Lyra's side story series, she searches the stars looking to try to find where Earth and Emma are. They are sisters. They love each other dearly. And they're going to find a way to find each other again. But now, Emma basically feels like... Like so many of the people in her life have disappeared without a trace and she wants to find out where they've gone. So she's going to become a very seasoned adventurer when we get into her teenage years and she is going to travel the world looking for details about what happened to her parents and trying to find ways where she could figure out how, how to even begin to go into space and track down her sister on another planet. So Emma wants to find out what happened to her parents and she wants to find out what happened to her sister and if she can have some way of contacting and connecting with her sister. So we're probably going to see her lifetime wish change from being a surgeon to being something like an adventurer, an explorer, a detective, something along those lines. So you can, you can rest assured Emma, she's a little bit of a firecracker and all of this challenge and loss is only going to reveal that she's got a lot of fight in her. So I'm very excited to see where Emma's going to go and today's going to be her birthday too which is very exciting but that's where we stand guys we have a half-built animal rescue center oh and i almost forgot to tell you how the animal rescue center works well we're just having fun uh anytime we find a stray we take the stray in we try to befriend the stray or we just cheat the stray into the household because sometimes you catch them with a net or something and then our goal is to actually take care of these animals. So we have to take on the burden of feeding, housing, and watching after their needs. And when we don't have a lot of money right now because we don't have a trade alliance with the aliens, that creates a little bit of a problem. But our goal is to go through and work with the animals and fulfill their wants and desires and make them happy and healthy enough that we're able to change what could be considered negative traits about them into positive traits by going into their lifetime happiness and being able to select the attitude adjustment for 7,500 lifetime wish points. And some of the negative traits that like some of the animals have are like skittish and destructive. You can't really adopt out a skittish destructive dog very easily. I mean, a lot of people get really defensive about the skittish one. Skittish one could probably be okay. But for the sake of our animal adoption challenge, we are going to say that skittish and destructive are a couple traits that probably need to be changed. And there's other positive traits like being playful or being, um, being very well behaved that we can train in the animals. So we're we're taking care of Dove until we can change those traits and then we will adopt her out to you guys. I will actually upload her so that you guys can download her and put her into your Sims 3 world and we'll say she found a successful happy home and you can even send pictures in once she's in your household and we can show those pictures off on our website. We can show them off on our Twitter. It'll be really awesome. Everybody can celebrate and you will have known where Dove came from. Rye is the 
same way. We need to train him and we need to make him not so noisy and that we need to get used to horses, which I think is the other reason Terry wants to improve his athletic skill. He doesn't know very much about horses and he's going to learn a lot about them the hard way. Well, I did not mean for the first episode to be all talking, but there was clearly a lot of plot. I just crammed like 120 episodes in season one worth of plot into just that conversation. So I hope you guys are excited as I am. We have a lot to do. And what you are seeing here is the groundwork laid out for multiple generations of this legacy. This is not going to be like, oh, here's generation two and now we're done. No, 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 no. You see this beautiful animal rescue? We are going to watch as we get the money and the funds and the experience to be able to build it up over time. We're going to watch maybe when we start creating, uh, if, if Tisha can become a veterinarian and we can temporarily during the day move in the vet assistants so that we can have them help us train the animals during daytime. So like from, I don't know, seven to five, we have a whole bunch of vets temporarily move in and they just wander around in here. Well, maybe we could make you guys those vet assistants as Sims. Wouldn't that be so fun? Putting your Sim selves in here, being able to see as this place expands over time. Maybe we can always have little pictures of the Sims or like all the animals we rescued out. That would be so cool. And what about over here? What about if we start figuring out how we would want to run the pet competitions in our game? How we would want to like give different medals to the different Dalmatians and have their pictures up generation after generation. Oh, it's going to be awesome, guys. There is a lot for us to do. There are so many stories we are going to see unfold. So many new things that years later I am still experiencing and enjoying in The Sims 3 and love sharing with all of you. So I'm going to go ahead and give my voice a bit of a break because, oh my goodness, I had a feeling it would be a little bit like running into a wall or like running up the mountain to explain the Radcliffe Dearly family and their amazing adventures. But sure enough, it was. Next time, we will definitely be diving immediately into the gameplay and just seeing where we go. It is Emma's birthday. Tish is trying to pull herself together, but she's really having a hard time of it. And Terry, unfortunately, does have to take care. Of, well, not unfortunately, but Terry does have to be practical and make the hard choice to take care of the animals before he can go and take care of Tisha. So there's a lot going on. And we're going to have to see what happens with this little fragment of the Radcliffe Dearly family from here. Who knows? Maybe we'll be lucky and just adorable puppies <laughs> will be able to make everything all better. But all right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.